Learning from the mistakes of others is the best way to learn without having to make those same mistakes yourself. Stay tuned as we share with you some mistakes that newbies make and not so newbies make so that you can avoid making the same ones. And make sure you stay till the end and we will give you a link to download our RV checklist. Hello everyone. If you are new here, thanks so much for joining us. I am Charity. And I'm Ben. And our channel is Grateful Glamper. We invite you to like this video and subscribe to stay up on all of the latest content when it comes to RV life and travel with your family. Today, we are talking about newbie mistakes, but in all reality, we all make mistakes when we're living the RV life. And while there are some that are more common to new RVers, we've still had our fair share of mistakes, even after RVing for several years. So today we are gonna share with you some of those mistakes in hopes that you can avoid some of those same mistakes. And we would love to hear more about maybe some of the mistakes you've made too. So one of the very first mistakes we made when we were brand new newbies out on our very first road trip was pulling into a gas station and not paying attention to the signs that designated cars from RVs and that was quite a predicament, wasn't it? Yes, it was. <laughs> we had a car trailer on the back of the RV and as you may already know, you can't really back up a car trailer. No, so the way a car dolly works is the wheels are on a platform and that platform actually pivots. So think about it like having a spaghetti noodle on the back of your RV and then trying to back that up in a straight line. It just does not work. If you pull into somewhere, Follow the semi trucks. Don't don't go. If if you see semi trucks not going there, don't go there. Follow the semi trucks. It'll be fine every time. So we had to end up unhooking it, then backing out, then rehooking up the trailer again. And it could have been avoided if somebody had just been following the signs <laughs> for RVs versus cars. So another mistake that we made on that very first maiden voyage across the United States was not checking our basement compartment doors before we left the campground. <laughs> I remember we were driving down the interstate and all of a sudden Ben had this very strange look on his face and there was another driver trying to flag us down, wasn't there? Yeah, someone's looking at me and, and pointing at me and yelling. I'm like, this guy's a crazy maniac. And so that we checked our rear view mirrors and realized one of our basement compartment doors was wide open. And thankfully we did not lose anything out of that basement compartment, but it's something that could have been avoided. And now what we do before that we leave, we walk around and just give each basement compartment door a tug to make sure that it is latched. So here's a recent mistake that's really not even probably a newbie mistake, but something that we made a mistake with anyway and that was is this past summer we decided to mooch dock in a friend's driveway for the evening now their driveway was on an incline and we didn't really think much of it however at about one o'clock in the morning our nor cold fridge started beeping and it threw a code that said no co no co means it's not cooling so we get up the next morning and it's throwing the code again and we do some further research. And basically what we found out is again, it wasn't working correctly because we weren't level, but by trying to reset it without fixing the problem meant that that code is now like a hard fault and it shuts down all of the heating slash cooling systems for the fridge. Yeah, unfortunately uh, you only have one chance. You only get one shot. And there's only one way on this particular model to get it out of lockout mode, isn't there? Yeah, and we found out how to do that. <laughs> and we found out how to become very handy. So what you had to do is take a jumper wire and jump two wires on the board. In fact, we felt so uncomfortable trying to attempt this ourselves that we made several phone calls to mobile RV services in the area, to RV dealers. And of course, no one was available on short notice. No one could get us in. So we were kind of forced to figure this out on our own. So thank goodness for Google. And thank goodness for a wiring diagram and uh, for some bravery <laughs> that we were able to just attempt this. Uh, we did get 
the circuit board reset with this particular procedure. And we will drop a link below to this reset procedure in case that you ever need to take a look at that. But we were able to get it reset and get our fridge back in working order so that we could keep moving. So one thing that we have learned that's so great about the RV community is that everybody is so willing to help each other out. So we're going to be able to learn from some other RVers, some mistakes that they've made and ways to avoid that. These are all great RVers that have a ton of experience. So make sure that you listen to their tips because there's some really great tips and they're also going to help you avoid some common mistakes to make as well. Hey everyone, I'm Damien Ross with Rootless Living Magazine. Today I wanna to talk about my biggest rookie newbie kind of mistake that I made. It actually took place way before I even got on the road. It had to do with me going into groups and asking questions. I was asking the wrong questions. I'll give you the first wrong question I ever asked. Should I get a class A or should I get a fifth wheel? That question just by itself means nothing unless you know me and my needs. What I should have asked was, why did you choose a class A over a fifth wheel? So maybe I could hear opinions and thoughts that would help me make a better decision. The other mistake I made is that I knew exactly which fifth wheel I wanted. So I went into forums and said, what kind of truck should I get? That's not where you need to get the opinion of someone that really understands the tow capacity of a vehicle. Guess where you get that? You get that from a manufacturer's website. Now for me, where I made my biggest mistake was, here's the truck I got. What do you think about the hitch? What hitch do I need? Do I need an auto slide hitch? Now it's very specific. It's very niche. Do I need an auto slide hitch for a short bed diesel Ram? I was told no, 99% said they've never used it. They never get in that tight of a situation. It'll never cause you to put a dent in your cab. Guess what folks? dent in my cab. The reason is because I didn't tell them that I have a Grand Design 375 RES Solitude that actually sticks out way over the hitch than most standard fifth wheels. So obviously there isn't the clearance. Again, I was getting opinions. I wasn't giving facts to get the best answer I could. And I know it's hard, but just again, let's go back to the Class A fifth wheel. Would you really ever ask anyone, should I get an apartment or should I get a mansion? It's just, they need to know more about you. The same thing here. I probably should have went and found a Grand Design Solitude group group and found someone that had the exact setup I have and asked them what I need. I probably would have been told, get that auto slide. It'll come in handy. Hi, my name is Glenda Hoon Russell and I am the author and content creator of The Status Quo, where I believe that the status quo is the enemy to living the life you truly deserve. My husband and I, we've been RVing for since 2011 with our Labrador and on the very first day that we set out, two of our AC units broke, our refrigerator went completely kaput, and then one of our fenders broke on, on the side of the RV because the wind was so strong. But it was just so funny because, and not at the time it was funny, but it just, things kept breaking on that very same day, on the first day of our travel journey. So my biggest tip for a rookie RVer is mindset. So I want your new mantra to be, this is all part of the adventure. This is all part of the adventure. So when the good things, when the bad things happen, especially the bad things happen, that with your family, with your spouse, with your dog, you just repeat, this is all part of the adventure. Because if not, sometimes those days that just seem so overwhelming, and then you get that RV bill and, you know, you get noisy, annoying neighbors, or you don't get the best parking spot in the park, or something breaks in the RV, or I, I mean, there's just a plethora of things that could go wrong. The, your, your refrigerator door falls off as you're driving down the road. Yes, I've heard this from Brianna. So make this your mantra. Uh, just It's all part of the adventure, the good and the bad. And that way you'll survive that the good, just remember that the bad times will always pass and so will the good. So you'll appreciate them more. You're doing something incredible or you're about to embark on something incredible. And so it's not going to be this picture perfect time. It's going to be just, it's going to, there's going to be bad times and there's going to be good times and you have to embrace both of them. Life on the road, rolling the punches. We are in Kentucky. We came in here to nice harvest coast, yep. but on the way in, a lot of glare on the rear view mirror, side mirror, driver's side, 
low branches. So glare plus rear view mirror plus branch plus glare equals this. Oh, baby. Oh, well. RV life is not always glamorous. Things are gonna happen and you just gotta roll with the punches. Luckily, we're headed to Nashville. they be there like three or four days with some friends and we're going to Red Bay after that. We had to get some other stuff down. Now we got one more thing. One more thing tied to the list. What do we call it? The ticket? One more thing on the ticket. One more thing on the ticket, but it worse. is what it is. Well, we tried to strap it down, but it's just too top heavy. I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the whole arm. Tiffin, here we come. Hey everybody, I'm Garrett. And I'm Carolyn. And we're Diary of a Family. And we launched in 2018 in, on September 1st. And this is our tip for you newer RVers. All right, you know that you have warranty work that you need to get done on your brand new rig. It has to be done within that first year. Here's our tip. Make sure that the shop knows they can only have it for a certain amount of time. Yes. I.e. a day, i.e. a couple of days, and get it back from them, regardless of whether they've done all of the work. Yes, because they can order the parts and they can get everything into the shop. Then you can schedule the time to get your trailer in so that you can have all the things fixed by the end of that day. Let's pause this tip for one second. I wanted to tell you about our story and our experience with an RV dealer and getting work done on our trailer. Last year when we went full time, we had a different trailer than we have now. But when we got our trailer in for some much needed warranty work, we ran into a problem. And basically what happened was we said, hey, we live in our trailer. We need it back as soon as possible. And they basically were like, okay, we went to a hotel. We stayed there for a couple days and then we called up the dealership, said, hey, how's it going? And they said, oh, we haven't even got to look at it yet. We basically had our trailer, which was our home, sitting in a dealer lot, doing absolutely nothing while we could have been staying in the trailer. By the time it was all said and done, we ended up spending about $2,000 on hotel and Airbnb bills as we waited for our trailer to get fixed. So that is why we feel very strongly about this tip. Let's finish this up. Now I know this means that you're probably gonna have to stay in a general location for that amount of time. So for instance, uh, our, tra our trailer was in the shop um, a couple of weeks ago. They've ordered in the parts and mm -hmm. now we're gonna have to drive from Phoenix back up to Flagstaff to get it into the shop. It's gonna be a bit of a drive, but we can get it done in a day. We can be back down. It'll be a three day trip total. And then they can't keep your RV for two or three or four months. Exactly. And that way you are not without a home for that long. For other great tips like this on living full time, please check us out on Diary of a Family on YouTube. We're also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So those are some great tips from other fellow RVers in the RV community. They absolutely were. The one thing I again love about the RV community is that everybody is always so willing to help each other out. And we really appreciate everybody that sent us in the, their video clips. And make sure you go check out their channels as well. So next we are gonna just share some basic tips that we've learned over the years to help you avoid some common mistakes while that you're out on the road. One thing that we recommend doing is always creating a checklist, whether it's departing or when you first get set up. So when leaving, always make sure your awning is in and your antenna is down. Yeah, and with our RV, we actually have more than one awning. So we always have to double check that both of those awnings are in and that we didn't accidentally leave one out. Yeah, or make sure you're not leaving anything behind or don't have a sewer hose or different hoses connected before you pull out. Definitely wanna make sure that doesn't happen. But let's talk about some other really important things that you absolutely need to know when you very first start getting RVing. And that is to know your height, 
and your length. So you want to know your height and your length because you don't want to rip off your roof or your ACs going under a bridge that you are just too tall for. You also do need to know your overall vehicle length. There are some areas of the country that have very tight hairpin turns and will actually have a length requirement for you to be able to travel on those types of roads. One thing that we invested in was an RV GPS, didn't we? What kind of RV GPS do we use? Yeah, so we purchased a Garmin RV specific GPS. It's the Garmin 770. The Garmin GPS allows you to put in your height for your particular RV. That way it will reroute you if there are lower bridges in the area. Or just non-RV friendly roads. Now, we did have a situation in the New Orleans area where it did take us down a road that we didn't necessarily consider RV friendly, but we didn't really have any issues and we were able to get through just fine. So one thing that we learned that we actually didn't know is that when you are hooked up to full hookups, you want to actually leave your black tank closed. If you leave it open, you get bits of toilet paper and sewage that kind of just start to build up because there's not the water component that stays in that black tank. So another common mistake is leaving your awnings out if you're leaving your rig for the day. Now, if you have a newer rig, chances are you'll have a wind sensor on your awning, but don't trust it. Don't always want to trust that wind sensor. A gust of wind could come up out of nowhere and your wind sensor does not have time to respond that quickly. Another thing we learned about leaving our awning out is because we do have a power awning, it does not have an adjustment to adjust it from right to left to give it some tilt for the rain to run off. You definitely want to adjust that for any rain. And if you cannot adjust it in our case, if there's any rain, you want to bring that awning in because what happened in our situation? So we had a bunch of water collect in the awning. So Charity was uh, pushing it up, trying to get all the water to, to fall down. And unfortunately it didn't quite work. But it collapsed half of our awning and thankfully it didn't do any damage to where we couldn't keep going or we didn't have the use of our awning, but we do need to still make a minor repair to one of the awning arms that's now slightly bent due to the weight of that water sitting in the awning. So another common mistake and something that we've done, even though we've been RVing for a while, is not checking for any obstructions around the slides. Now, that applies to both outside of the rig, but also inside of your rig too. Do you remember what happened with the Gorilla Glue? Yes. One time we left some Gorilla Glue on the countertop and we didn't think about it and pulled the slide in. And unfortunately it slid behind the slide and it squeezed the entire container of Gorilla Glue into the basement compartment. That was definitely not fun. You think cleaning up any sort of liquids is difficult try Gorilla Glue. On the outside, we had a close call as well, right? We did. We were staying at a campground in Nebraska and put out the slides after, of course, we had put down the levelers. And we had literally about this much clearance in between our back bedroom slide and a utility box that was on the outside. <laughs> and I remember specifically making sure before that we put those slides back in to make sure that the jacks stayed up because if we had dropped those jacks, we would have dropped right down onto that utility box. So now what do we do when we go to put our slides out? Now we have a pair of walkie talkies, guys. Walkie talkies are your friends and it will save your marriage. They will save your marriage. We have somebody on the outside with a walkie talkie communicating with whomever is on the inside, putting those slides out. So if we need to stop or if we're too close to a tree or something like that, they can alert the person putting out the slides to stop what they're doing. So another thing that you just need to expect when you're RVing is learning how to be handy, isn't it? Yes. Do you remember that time in Florida, what happened with the door? Oh yes, we actually got locked in our RV. I came out this morning and had my coffee in my hand. I had uh, my chair out. I can sit down and have a nice cup of coffee out by the beach. And uh, the door wouldn't open. Completely um, jammed. So I had to crawl out the driver's side and try to unlock it from the outside. And that wouldn't work. So Charity had to 
unscrew this just to get us out of the door so we could get out of the RV. But so now I'm looking at it, see what's going on. Yeah, you're probably wondering what, <laughs> how did you get locked in your RV? So we had a door actuator uh, for the remote actually seize up. So it was um, in the closed position. So we learned how to become very handy and took the door panel off and remove the door actuator so we could get out of our RV and enjoy our cup of coffee. Absolutely. And here's another tip. You can save quite a bit of money by learning to do some very basic repairs yourself. The other thing that we always recommend is making sure that you have at least a basic tool set with you. Some screwdrivers, some wrenches, some socket wrenches, things like that, that you can make minor repairs as you need to as you're going down the road. Also, don't forget about your little Leatherman tool. It'll come in handy. That and Gorilla Tape. You just think Gorilla Tape's the solution for everything. Bring a roll of Gorilla Tape. You'll use it all the time. This is a big one. Relying on campground Wi-Fi. Just because the campground says they have Wi-Fi available does not mean A, it's going to be a strong signal, or B, that it's going to be fast, or C, even work half of the time. We learned that the hard way, didn't we? We sure did. And unfortunately, because we do work remotely and we own our own businesses and absolutely need a reliable internet connection, we learned our very first trip out within the first week out to get our own Wi-Fi. So we ended up uh, with our Verizon plan, getting a Jetpack um, MiFi unit that we now use and our kids kind of think it's cool because then we have Wi-Fi as we're driving down the road so they can continue to be connected. And we also got a little MIMO antenna that we connect up to it and suction cup to the window and that thing has really increased the signal when you're in areas that don't have the best uh, coverage. So thank you so much for watching our video today. We hope that you found it informational and informative and we would love to learn from you what were some of the mistakes that you've made that you will never make again. So leave us a comment below and let us know maybe what those mistakes were and everybody can learn from each other. So we invite you to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, make sure that you tap the bell because then you get notified every time that we have a new video available for you. And you'll find a link to the RV checklist down below. Our, 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 our. <laughs> it's recording now. Hmm. Is this recording now? Yep. Are you sure that this is on? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Coming round the mountain when she comes. When she comes. <laughs> it's not windy. It's not windy. I'm standing kind of like this. You see her hair? It's windy. <laughs> it's not windy. There's a train. Can you guys hear that? I was looking at you. Okay. Hey. <sighs> You're shushing the bird. <laughs> You want to share with us why that's so important? To know your length? <laughs> to know your RV height and to know how long that you are. However, it is entertaining sitting there <laughs> during a windstorm watching all these RVers rush in to pull in their awnings. It is entertaining. And this particular garment, you're just sitting there staring at me, it's weird. I'm listening. Do you remember what happened when we blew the fuse on our inverter our first trip out? <laughs> when we blew the fuse on- Come on, there you go. Remember when we blew that fuse on the inverter on our very first trip out because you had replaced the batteries, but you had installed them backwards. <laughs> <laughs> What's a PDF? PDF. PDF. Portable document format. Personal. You have something in between your teeth. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, kind of you do. A little bit. I don't know if they can see it, but.